Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I like to take science and apply it to all plants, both indoors and outside. It is blizzarding outside where I am, so if we're officially going into more houseplant type content, don't worry, I'm doing some indoor gardening stuff. Um, and of course, we're going to do what we did last winter where we just do theory. We just go through theories of gardening, uh, concepts, that sort of thing to help you guys apply that in the summer. But today's video, we're gonna be talking about whether or not you should replant a house plant after you bring it home. Now, this is a topic that I think everyone's kind of a little bit split on, and it is because it comes down to your situation and ultimately the plant itself. I'm going to give you my opinion on some of this stuff, and then other parts of this is going to be more scientific literature. Now, keep in mind, whenever it comes to horticulture, uh, it's typically more geared towards the fruits and veg than it is towards house plants, and it's because the funding is in feeding the world, not so much things looking pretty. So the information here is limited. However, we can apply some of that horticulture science that comes from fruits and veg and apply it to house plants when necessary. So let's get into it. So this is a plant I got. It's a uh, Florida Green Beauty. I really like odd shaped leaf plants. I don't know what it is. I'm totally obsessed. Now I have to laugh because this plant two years ago, a year ago even I think, would have been like $45, $50 for a slip, like a small cutting. And this bad boy here I think was nine bucks. So he's huge. He's a little ragtag. He definitely is growing in a few different directions, but he's healthy, he's happy. Since I've had him, he's put on, you know, one new leaf in segment. So he's doing pretty darn good. Now you're probably thinking, well, why would you not have repotted a plant that is so ginormous that if I put it down and the stem isn't somehow supporting it, it's just going to fall over. It's going to literally tip this pot over because the pot is too small. The uh, actual soil content doesn't weigh enough. And so that's a good question. But the reason why I personally do not repot my plants right off the bat is because one too many times I find that they are cuttings. Now, this is not an issue. It's a great way to transport plants. However, what I will say is when a plant is a cutting, any damage to new roots is a small setback when we have little tiny nodule roots and nothing of you know, substantial size. When we have more roots in the bottom, so if we let this dry out, popped it out, took a, a look at that root mass, we may see more root hairs and fibers, and then it's not as bad to repot because every time we split a root, we redistribute something called auxin, which ultimately causes a forking of roots and a larger root biomass. So a little bit of root damage, under, percent, under the 30% mark, under the nature tax of 30%, we're typically okay. However, even if we do have those roots in place, our plant just moved into an entirely different ecosystem. So it went from what I would presume is a nursery in some exotic land like Florida or something of that nature, and then it gets shipped to a greenhouse or a plant boutique here in Saskatoon for my case, but for someone else it may be somewhere different. And inside that plant boutique that they make their money on plants and they have a ton of plants, their humidity is probably pretty high, similar maybe to what the actual nursery was, and the temperatures are pretty high as well. And then we bring it into our home where we may run our temperatures a little bit cooler. Our humidity most definitely is going to be different unless we do have an indoor greenhouse or some sort of an Ikea cabinet setup. And therefore the plant has a lot of adjusting to do with its upper biomass. That means that the lower biomass is kind of gone into almost a dormancy of states. Now there's going to be some growth, but it's safe to presume that there's going to be less growth or some cut back in that growth. And so because of that, if we do snap a root or we do break something, it is gonna take a little bit more time for that plant to recover, whether it be callousing that root off and then splitting off to make more roots or just in general recuperating the root loss that has happened 
or been incurred by you repotting. Now, whenever you do repot a plant, you do want to try to break up that root ball if it's present, because we want to redirect that the roots into the new growing medium. The roots will do it on their own, but if they're particularly tangled, they'll kind of just continue to circle and not really expand it to the new growing medium or the potting up situation we put them in. And so because of that, we would have to destroy some roots or we would have to ultimately wreck some roots, which would affect our plant and it would have a poor response. It may die back. We may end up with root rot, things of that nature, because it's not going to take up as much water as we perceived it to take up before. So the rules I like to follow when it comes to repotting, because it ultimately comes down to the root biomass and that plant finding that equilibrium with its upper biomass before reconcentrating energy back into that lower portion of the plant. Because it takes some time for the plant to adapt to the new humidity levels, we want to wait until we get some form of new growth. Now this new piece of new growth here was present partially when I purchased the plant. And that is something that I look for when I do purchase plants is some form of new growth, showing that the plant is happy and healthy and not in a state of shock from when it left the nursery to the greenhouse. And then I'm not going to shock it again by transporting it to my house. So I want to make sure that the plant has somehow adjusted to its new environment. And that's a sign that it has adjusted to the greenhouse that I actually picked it up from. That means I'm going to actually have to wait until I get out or I prefer to wait. You don't have to wait um, until I get a second new leaf on the plant. That's going to indicate to me that my guard cells and my stomata and the plant itself has gain some form of equilibrium with the world around it, my little microclimate, if you will, in my home, and that ultimately the roots have caught up to be able to supply the new growth that's happening here. If I don't see any new growth, I am gonna wait because that means the roots themselves have not gotten to go yet and that the plant itself has not yet obtained that balance. The balance I'm talking about in this upper portion is the plant's ability to adjust to the humidity. So if the humidity falls, which is going to be the case commonly in our homes, the stomata will open and when they're used to losing is a little bit of water from a humid environment. When they go to let the CO2 in, they lose some water, but not much because the air is fully saturated. What ends up happening when we have a leaf that is not adapted to our environment, we have the stomata sitting there thinking like, oh God, I'm losing a bunch of water. A bunch of water's coming out. The roots have to be able to keep up with the water loss that's happening above ground. So the roots are now being told the straw is getting very empty. We need to speed this process up. So the roots are going to pull more and more water into the actual plant to, so that when those stomata open and they bring in the CO2 and they let the water out, they're able to keep a balance and stop the wilting. If we see wilting, it's a turgor effect. That's what we call that. And that's caused because we don't have enough water in the plant. There's not enough uh, blood in the veins to keep it upright, if you will. If we damage the roots, we are just really putting that plant in a bad place. We won't be able to keep up with the new water loss that's happening in our less humid environment because we don't have the root mass to keep up with it. Now, one thing the plant will do before it begins to put out new growth is it's probably gonna put a lot of energy into those roots to build the roots up so that there's more root hairs and more sites for water uptake to supply this upper biomass that's already here to keep up with the humidity in our environment. Now, one way you can try to avoid all of this and you know really speed up the process of being able to transplant and speed up the recovery or the shock of a plant being moved to a new environment ultimately comes down to VPD. Now, I did an entire video on this. The plant sensor that um, many of you are part of the beta for and you're going to actually get a new final sensor you're going to end up with two at the end for the beta people um one of which is really dialed in and professional the one you have right now is kind of like a um we want you to test the sensors and let us know if they work or not basically so we do we're making some changes for the official one that you are going to get 
But for right now, that does calculate VPD. And so if you can get that VPD in the green, that's a good sign that the plant's gonna recover faster and you're gonna be able to repot sooner and you're going to be able to lessen the potential stress that the, the plant may ultimately incur. So with that being said, how long until you can transplant a new plant you brought into your home? And the answer to this is it's going to really depend on the plant and ultimately the environment you put it in. If you want to expedite this process, you need to dial in something called VPD, which is ultimately the humidity in the ambient air. And you wanna have that in an ideal range so that when the stomata do open, less water is lost or an ideal amount of water is lost to allow the CO2 in. If your home is too dry, too much water is going to be lost when the CO2 is brought in and ultimately it could cause a plant to wilt and make those roots work a little bit harder. Now this isn't a bad thing because the roots will build up in the pot which will ultimately support the upper growth and then once the roots have built up a biomass to supply this with enough rigidity, <laughs> this will begin to grow. Your new uh, plant foliage will begin to grow. One thing when you get a new plant, if you notice that this is beginning to brown your new growth that you did see at the greenhouse, this is a sign that your, your plant or your house may be too dry. The ambient um, humidity around the plant is too dry. And so it had to actually drop this leaf because it's losing too much water through your other leaves. This is subtle. It's happening on such a small scale that you won't be able to really see it. So something to keep in mind there. Uh, one thing you could do to adapt your plant to your new drier climate would be to toss it in a Rubbermaid or into some sort of plastic bag and slowly but surely introduce it over time to its actual new environment. The bag or the Rubbermaid is gonna be able to keep up that humidity around the plant. And then once, you know, at nighttime or during the day, for half the day, you would put the plant in the environment of your home, which would ultimately help that plant regulate or begin to discover a drier climate and ultimately put the right processes in place to make that happen. So like I said, this is just my science dig on how to repot house plants. If you're comfortable repotting them the moment you get home, then do so if you have a known issue with the soil whether it's in the wrong potting soil or if it has a disease or if it has a bug of course by all means repot it because that's ultimately going to save the plant uh, more so than just not repotting it but if the plant is in ideal condition you know a little top heavy is fine then that is maybe something for you to consider today's video sponsor is ketonic 100 percent organic soil amendment sourced from sustainable peat it's omni listed and certified by ecocert canada Ketonic helps your garden grow and thrive by promoting microbial activity and naturally replenishing the soil health. Get 15% off your bottle of Ketonic with the discount code in the description. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments down below if you repot upon arrival or if you like to wait for a little bit of time. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!